All right, so in aqueous equilibria, we're pretty much going to talk about three different equilibrium systems that occur in aqueous solutions. All right, so that's all we're going to do. We're going to keep talking about aqueous equilibria. I think they, you know, Tro just got tired. He's like, I can't keep writing this chapter. I got to end this chapter. So end it. New chapter. Okay, so just stop talking about that. All right. Uh, so the first one is all about acids and bases. Okay, the buffers. That's a mixture of acids and bases. And then we're going to talk about titration curves, which we've already done in the lab, so that should be uh, uh, pretty straightforward, where we use titration curves to find out the equilibrium constants for acids and bases. So you determine the Ka, you can also determine the Kb, or Kba, in for weak bases. And then we'll talk about the molar solubility and equi uh, equilibrium for solubility, which you already determined the Ksp of a system. So we're just going to talk about those three things. All right, so for buffers, what is a buffer? Okay, it's probably in the back of your mind. As soon as I pulled up this slide, you're like, oh, I can't wait to find out what a buffer is. I can see it in your eyes. All right, so a buffer is a solution that is able to minimize changes in pH. That's what buffers do. They minimize changes in pH. And they're pretty awesome at it. Okay, they're awesome at it. You're going to be a fan of buffers by the end of this section. You're going to be like, wow, I should go get a buffer t-shirt. Okay. Body by buffer. Okay. I mean, even buffers are that important. They're keeping you alive right now. All right, you're going to be a fan. All right, so uh, that's what they do. How would you make a buffer? Okay, so a buffer is comprised. It is a mixture of a weak acid and weak base. of comparable concentrations or comparable. Okay, I say that of comparable concentrations, you may not see that in most definitions of buffers, but that's important. Because if you have a weak acid or a weak base, you're going to have both a weak acid and a weak base. Okay, so let's make a buffer. All right, so let's go get a beaker. All right, so weak acid and weak base. What's your favorite uh, weak acid? HF. HF? Mine too. Good job. All right, so we're going to make a very highly toxic buffer. I would not recommend doing this at home. All right, so HF. So if you throw in HF, and yes, you better have some PPE, personal protection equipment on if you're throwing around some HF. All right. It will, of course, react with water. How will it react with water? What will it do? form hydronium. And it's weak, and so it's going to set up equilibrium. And of course, after it donates that proton to make hydronium, what's left? Mm, so uh, hydro, or HF donated the proton. Fluoride. Yep. Fluoride, F minus. So just by placing in some HF in that solution, you've got HF and fluoride is conjugate weak base. But the, we know that uh, for most, the vast majority of weak acids, the Ka is really small. 
which enabled us to use the X this small approximation. That was good. But what does that mean? We're not going to make much fluoride. All right? There's not going to be much fluoride in comparison to HF. HF concentration is going to be a lot higher than fluoride. So if you want to make a buffer with HF, you also need more conjugate or more weak base. It doesn't have to be as conjugate, but that's usually what we say. So we're going to have to add in some sodium fluoride or something to put some fluoride ions in there. So now suddenly we have HF and fluoride in comparable concentrations. So now we have a buffer. Uh, yeah, so we'll talk about that in terms of what we call buffer uh, pH, or what is it, buffer range. Uh, the max you can usually go for buffers, and there's still a good buffer, is 10 times more concentrated one way or the other. So you can have 10 times more acid than base or 10 times more base than acid. So that's what we mean by comparison. So they don't need to be exact, but they need to be at least that range. If you have 100 times more acid than base, that's not going to be a very good buffer because you just don't have enough ba buffer, base for the buffer. So for a buffer to work, and we'll talk about how they work, you do need both. You do need the acid and the base. And that is why it is important that uh, it has to be a weak acid and a weak base. If I were to put HF in there and said, OK, that's the acid. Now I need a base. Let's go grab some hydroxide. Hydroxide is a strong base. What would that do? It would just neutralize all the HF. You don't have any HF. So it has to be weak so that both can exist in the same solution. And that only can happen with an equilibrium system where you have both the acid and the base on both sides of those reactions, so you need to set up equilibrium. If you throw in a strong acid, strong base, you're just going to neutralize the other one. All right? If you put in the um, sodium fluoride, what's the sodium going to So the sodium doesn't do much in there. That's just a spectator ion. So let's highlight that. It has to be weak. Which I'm being a very big hypocrite right now. I usually am not. I don't like being. I'm not. I'm not, not. But I usually tell students not to highlight things. And now here I am highlighting. So highlighting isn't a good way to learn something. You should read it and then you should write it down. That's what you should do. You shouldn't highlight. Highlighting does very little. If you really want to find that specific line, like later on, like, oh, I'm going to come back to that. Like, that's fine, highlight it so you know where it is. But to try to learn something, don't highlight it. Write it down, write it down. That's be much better. I'm highlighting here just because it's fun, OK? Just look, <laughs> I'm having a blast highlighting, OK? So if you're highlighting for the pure enjoyment of highlighting, go for it, OK? All right, we're here to have a good time, all right? Obviously, that's what we're here for. Because everyone here is having such a good time. I don't know it has to be weak. OK, yeah, see? You didn't highlight it. It has to be weak. Good job. It does. HF does ionize or dissociate to make fluoride, but we just know that the Ka is going to be small, so there's not going to be much fluoride. So if you throw in like 0.1 molar HF, you're going to have like 1 times 10 to the negative third molar fluoride. So you're just not going to have very much fluoride because they're weak. So you've got to add extra fluoride to make the concentrations comparable. So basically we're adding an outside um, base. Mm -hmm. to get them comparable. And they, and, and they don't even have to be conjugates. You can make a buffer from any, any weak acid, weak base. You can make a weak ba we, uh, buffer from HF and ammonia. HF's the weak acid, ammonia's the weak base. Boom, buffer. That's another very good use of the word boom. Boom, buffer. OK, because you're going to be such a fan of buffers. You're going to talk like that. All right. So. Now, I know what you're thinking. How do they minimize the pH? That's what you really want to know right now. I can see it in your eyes. You're so excited. All right. So there's two things okay, that can happen. Okay, minimize the pH. That obviously means there's going to be a change to the pH that they're going to minimize. So how do we change the pH? What types of things? We'd either add an acid or add a base. 
Okay, so that's the two ways you can change the pH, add an acid or, change, or add a base. Okay, so what happens if you add an acid? So now we get to play the game. Let's add acid. Everyone's second favorite buffer game. Slightly behind, let's add base. We're gonna play that next. All right, it's a good game. You win prizes, burettes. Graduated cylinders. <laughs> Come on down. All right. So let's add a strong acid. What's your favorite strong acid? HCl. HCl, good one. Good choice. All right. So let's say we add, that's a terrible CL. It's a good time of year for HCl, too. Okay. Going into the winter, it's a good year for HCl. <laughs> this is all the reactions? Yes, this is the reactions. Let's add acid. We're going to react. <clears throat> All right, so we place some HCl into our buffer that contains HF and F minus. What will the HCl react with? F minus. The F minus. Because HF is what? Acid. It's an acid, right? It's our weak acid or our WA. So what is its con fluoride is its conjugate? Base. Or, Woba, uh, anybody? No? Okay. All right, so it's this conjugate weak base. So if you add an acid, there's a base that the HCl is going to neutralize. So it reacts with the fluoride. Now we added a strong acid, so we don't have to worry about equilibrium, simplifying the system. So boom, left to right, one way, no coming back. And what are we going to make? We're going to make some HF and some chloride. So that's how the buffer is able to minimize the change in pH if an acid is introduced to the system. It's got a base sitting right there ready to neutralize it. Right? But the pH still does change a teeny tiny bit. Okay? What's that? Add more. Add more. No, so just we add a some HCl. That reaction occurs, fluoride neutralizes it, but the pH is still going to change anyways, okay? Not because of that uh, directly from the HCl, but sort of indirectly because of a shift to the equilibrium. It actually causes some Le Chatelet principles uh, to be going on, okay? So if you added HCl, fluoride neutralized it, what happens to my concentration of fluoride? It's going to go down, yeah, it's being neutralized. It's neutralizing the HCl. So the fluoride concentration goes down. It's making some HF. So what happens to the concentration of HF? Increasing. It's increasing. Okay. So now, what about my equilibrium system? Over here, when we're playing let's add acid, the fluoride concentration's going down. The HF concentration's going up. Which way is that going to cause my equilibrium to shift? And it turns out they're going to both do the same way. Okay, so if I'm increasing the concentration of the reactant, which way is that going to shift? To the right. Okay. Yeah, if I increase concentration, HF bumps into water more, goes right. Okay. If I decrease the concentration of fluoride, which way is that going to shift my equilibrium? To the right. Less fluoride, so the reverse rate goes down, forward rate's bigger, still shifting to the right. So both of them cause a shift in equilibrium to the right. What happens to my concentration of hydronium after that shift? It's going to go up. It's going to go up. What's going to happen to my pH if my hydronium goes up? It's more acidic, so what happens to the pH? It goes down. Yep. So it still goes down a bit because of the shift in equilibrium. All right, so let's put that into words. Actually, we put it into words. Let's write that down. That's what I mean. Okay, and then we'll highlight it. Okay, so after the addition of the HCl, the concentration of HF goes up and fluoride goes down. That just happens because of that neutralization reaction. So the equilibrium shifted right.
causing the hydronium to go up, which meant the pH went down a bit. I know a bit is two words. I ran out of space and that's pretty close. Okay. I don't know what I could do there. A bit. How about I do this? That's better. It's still going to go down, but it's going down a much smaller amount than if you added HCl to a non buffered system. And don't worry. I can already tell, we'll calculate how much the pH changes uh, in a buffered system. I know you're excited about that. Okay, don't worry. Just, let's just talk about buffers a little bit more often. All right, so that's uh, what happens if you add an acid or play the game Let's Add Acid. The next game we can play is, of course, Let's Add Base. Come on down. You're the next contestant on Let's Add Base. You have, you have uh, competitions where you're titrating. Who can get the lightest pink? Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. Or measure out the mass, like measure out the point, point 0.4 grams of acetosalicylic acid. Who can get the closest to 0.4? Ooh, oh, 4 of water went over. I'm not going to win the burette. I think I got a winner. <laughs> I should pitch this to somebody. Sure. I should. In, in a lot of ways, I should be. Yeah, I'm already a YouTube star. I'm up to like, <laughs> I'm up like 21 views. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out. All right. So, uh, what's your favorite base? Strong base. Sodium hydroxide. All right. So that's good. Sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide. That's good. Either way. Uh, we're still always just going to be the hydroxide. I mean, we can throw potassium or sodium in there. This is going to be a spectator ion, so we'll just focus on the hydroxide. All right, so we added a base to our buffer. What in that buffer could potentially react with hydroxide? HF or fluoride? HF, yeah, it's our weak acid. It's our WA. Okay. Yep, hydroxide is the base, so it's going to be it's going to react with the weak acid present in your buffer. And so that will neutralize the hydroxide. And what's going to be produced? Water and fluoride. Okay, so yay, we played, we played uh, let's add base. The hydroxide was neutralized by the weak acid present in the buffer. But again, it's going to minimize the pH, not going to completely stop it from changing, and that's because of the shift in equilibrium. So let's figure out which way it shifts. All right, so the hydroxide is neutralized by the HF. What's going to happen to my concentration of HF? It's going to go down. Got to erase all my shifting. Yeah, you guys don't have the erase. You could use pencil. But no, you want to keep it. So just rewrite it and do that again. Do you want to give me time? I'll, I'll give you time. I can edit this out of the video. <laughs> again, I have to edit a lot out of the videos. HF went down. Why it's making water and fluoride. So what's happening to the fluoride concentration? Going up, yep, it's being produced, so it's going to go up. So now let's uh, think about which way the uh, equilibrium is shifting. So we added fluoride's been going up. Which way is that going to shift the equilibrium? To the left. Fluoride's going to bump into hydronium more often, shift it to that way. We're losing HF, so which way is that going to shift the equilibrium? To the left, yeah, so the forward rate would go down. That means the reverse rate's bigger, shifting to the left as well. So we're going to shift to the left. So what's going to happen to our concentration of hydronium? 
It's going to decrease. It's going to go down. What's going to happen to our pH if our hydronium goes down? It's going to increase. Make it more basic. So after the hydroxide was added, our HF went down. It neutralized it. So that's, that's what it did. So it's going down. And the fluoride went up. So the equilibrium shifted left this time. When that happened, the hydronium concentration went down. And that, said, that meant the pH went up, right? And again, you're going to be quite amazed at how small of an amount it will go up a bit. And that's how you play. Let's add base. So I should wear this clip on mic. I should get one of those like skinny mics, like with the you know, I can hold. <laughs> Just walking around. Like, and when everybody asks a question, like <laughs> like going to the crowd. <laughs> get a bad suit. Oh, I've got a bad suit already, so I just wear it. <laughs> okay. So uh, the two conclusions that we made shouldn't be that surprising. If you added HCl, what eventually happened to the pH? It went down a bit. Okay, that, it, we're adding an acid, so it, it's not surprising that when it went down, it went, it's going to go down a lot less if it was an unbuffered so, uh, system, but it did go down. You're adding an acid. Okay, what happens when we played less at, let's add base? What happened to the pH? It increased. Yeah, so you're adding a base, so it's not surprising that the pH, so there's no, nothing counterintuitive about that. It's just not going down or up directly from the addition of the ACL or hydroxide. There's a shift in the equilibrium that's occurring, causing the change in pH. Yes? And there's a 